Hi everybody, my name is Chris Dunaway. I'm with the LSU Ag Center, and today we're gonna to be starting our class on composting. Now, composting is one of my favorite subjects. I actually like composting more than I like growing plants. That's what a freak I am. But composting is very important, and we're gonna talk about what composting is in this segment. So first of all, in its broadest definition, composting is the biological breakdown of organic material into humus. Composting is an essential to life on Earth. It's as essential as water and air. The recurring and endless process of composting is nature's way of processing biological waste and recycling essential plant nutrients. So composting is nutrient recycling. You're just taking old material and you're releasing the nutrients that are stored in that plant material back into a usable source for new plants to grow in. Plants, in turn, support all life on Earth. So that's how important uh, composting is and the role of, of humus in the, in the cycle of life on Earth. But if you look at our little graph over here, you'll see that we start with plant material, some kind of like a tree or um, vegetable or any kind of plant, flower that we're dealing with. We usually use what we want from that material. So if it's, if it's a wood product, we make lumber out of it. If it's vegetables, we'll eat those vegetables. If it's flowers, we enjoy the flowers. But when their time is done, or if there's leftover bits that we don't know what to do with, we can put them in our composter and recycle them for our new plants to grow in. So you see it goes down through the recycling into the composter. Time and the biological process happens. And next thing you know, we're left with this humus. So this is what I'm talking about. So we've got our finished product here. This is, this is basically soil now. This is organic material. There is, there is no mineral in this. There is no rock, sand, silt, or clay particles in this. This is all broken down plant material. And it came from sources like you know, these decorative plants. Here's some grass, flowers, vegetable scraps. Uh, when we're gardening, even when we take the crops away, there's usually a lot of organic material left, you know, the stalks and stems and things like that, that if we were to just throw them away, we're throwing away the soil that was in our garden. We need to get that back in the garden. The other thing, so these are considered green, even though they're not necessarily always green, these are considered green products in the composter. Now, brown material is things like paper and leaves things like this, these are, and wood chips. Things like this are considered brown material, and Dr. Joy is gonna cover more about that later, but it's very important to know the difference between your brown material and your green material when you're composting. More commonly, when we talk about composting, what we mean is the process by which we transform organic waste into soil building amendments in our gardens. So when we talk about composting, even though all this composting goes on in the forest and it has been going on since the beginning of time. We're just worried about the process that we're in charge of. So when we collect the material and put it in a special composting situation, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Uh, it is a control process that does require human activity. It works much better if you're an active part of the composting. According to the National Organic Standards Board Definition of Compost, the product of a managed process through which microorganisms break down plant and animal materials into more available forms suitable for application to the soil. Compost must be produced through a process that combines plant and animal, and, mm, combines plant and animal materials with an initial carbon to nitrogen ratio of between 25 to one and 40 to one. Producers using an in-vessel or static aerated pile system must maintain the composting materials at a temperature between 130 degrees Fahrenheit and 170 degrees Fahrenheit for three days. Producers using a window system must maintain the composting materials at a temperature between 131 and 170 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 days during which time the materials must be turned a minimum of five times. So this is the official definition, there's a lot to it, but just know that it's important, the, uh, it is a biological process. There are microorganisms doing the work. Uh, we have to provide the 
materials that they need in the form of carbon and nitrogen. So those are the food sources that they're eating. And it has to be at the right ratio because they, it's just like us, we need a right, the right kind of diet. If, if, if they have too much brown material, they won't have enough energy. If they have too much green material, material they won't have enough uh, stuff to actually chew on. They'll just, uh, it's, it's like eating a diet of ice cream all day. And the temperature is important too because there's diseases and also seeds. Uh, there are a lot of seeds in these little peppers. And it's important to get that compost up to the right temperature because we want to kill all the bacteria and disease uh, organisms. And we also want to kill the seeds. Uh, if we don't do our composting correctly and we throw all these seeds in the garden, we're going to be growing a lot of peppers. So that's, <laughs> and also other weeds. And even though we like peppers, if we're trying to grow, uh, I don't know, zucchini, and all of a sudden the peppers show up, we've got a weed problem. So cold versus hot composting. Cold composting is a slow breakdown of organic material that is piled together. So even if you don't do anything, chances are the process will happen. If you have a pile on the ground around here, earthworms are going to move into it. Um, and they, they like a cold process. They will break it down, but it's much slower. Um, there is little attention paid to the carbon-nitrogen ratio. So this is just a basically, uh, a, basically a lot of times what we end up having to do. We're just trying to make a compost pile with what's available, and we don't necessarily pay attention to the ratio. There's no human involvement in the aeration or moisture content in the pile, which is very important. We'll find out later. Um, those microorganisms need food, which is the material that we're providing for them. And they also need air and moisture, just like we do. So it's important to keep providing those for them. Materials are added and left on their own to decompose. Uh, rather than regularly being turned, mixed, or otherwise managed throughout the season. So again, it's a real composting. It takes a lot of uh, intervention. We're going to turn the pile. We're going to add moisture to it. And we're going uh, to continue to make sure that the, the food, the water, and the air are all there for them. Coal piles, generally, um, <clears throat> coal piles do generally create compost more slowly, often taking several months or even a year, depending on the conditions. So if it's hot and dry, uh, the stuff is going to, or actually, if it's cold and dry, if it's cold and dry like in Colorado, things don't ever break down. You can find wood laying around that's been there for years, hundreds of years. Down here where it's warm and moist all the time, things do break down pretty quickly. So this is actually what's going on in the natural system anyway. Leaves fall on the ground, and if, unless nobody rakes them up, they will, will eventually break down and be a nutrient source for the plants that they came from. One thing about coal piles is that they are more likely to be smelly or have an odor associated with them because the aerobic organisms that we were depending on to break, break down will die because they run out of oxygen, and anaerobic organisms will take over. And they're the ones that release the, uh, the stinky gases that we don't like. So that's one thing you have to worry about. The other thing, another disadvantage is, um, is that uh, coal piles, according to, by the name alone, they rarely get hot enough so that they kill the disease and weed seeds that are in, in the pile, in the material. So that, that could be bad. And coal piles are also more likely to attract um, unwanted critters like uh, uh, grounds, uh, well, rats and mice and things like that, because uh, they will burrow in and live in the material, but they can't live in a hot pile. It's, it's too uncomfortable for them. Hot composting, on the other hand, is a rapid breakdown of organic matter that is managed by people. Attention is paid to the carbon-nitrogen ratio uh, as the materials are added, so it's important we, we save off a big bag of leaves if we have too many leaves and just dole them out as we add um, green material or things like that. Human activity is required to maintain good aeration and proper moisture content. Uh, we're going to talk about that pretty well later on. It's very important to get that air in there, like I said. And the moisture, oddly enough, it's harder than you think to get a compost pile wet. So we're going to have to talk about that also. <laughs> OK, so the benefits of hot composting are basically just the opposite of coal composting. They don't have any offensive odors. If anything, it smells like this really good earthy smell that uh, we uh, 
basically have come to associate with healthy things. Um, hot composting does give off heat, water, and CO2. Those are the uh, byproducts of the compost pile. The temperatures do reach about between 131 and 170 degrees, or even 175 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to kill the microorganisms, the disease, uh, disease organisms, and also the seeds. And because it's hot and rapidly breaking down, there's less likely for varmints to live inside. Vermicomposting is the process by which worms are used to convert organ organic material, usually waste, into humus-like material known as vermicompost. So this is using worms. Uh, so they're, <laughs> they, worms are the greatest little uh, factories. They eat the material at one end and excrete it at the back. And as, as they travel, they, they aerate the soil and they really break down that organic material and let it, uh, make it useful for us. So the short version of this is hot composting is good. Cold pom composting is less good. Uh, especially if you're going to use that material later in your garden. So, you know, this is the beginning. Now we're going to go on to the next lessons and find out just how to do this and what it takes to get good finished humus that's going to be ready for our garden.